Hello! Welcome to this video. Uh, I'm extremely congested, but we're just going to go ahead and do this video anyways because we're two-thirds through January and if I wait any longer it will no longer be relevant. Today I am going to show you the books that I will be reading for the 2022 Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. This was started by Chantal at Chantal Reads All Day. I kind of have a hard time with book challenges because I don't have a ton of books. I mean I have a lot, don't get me wrong, but I mean as far as YouTube goes I don't have like I just have these two shelves. I mean, they go up, but just these two. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about this and let's dive right into it. So the first prompt for January is the word quiet. So I was able to find two books that fit this. Uh, the word quiet, but also anything that sort of goes along with quiet. <laughs> so the first one I have is Awakening the Quieter Virtues by Gregory Spencer. Sorry for the glare. Um, and the second one I have is Still Waters, a Noble Bright Fantasy Anthology edited by C.J. Brightly. So I thought Still kind of goes with quiet. Uh, plus, this actually kind of set the tone for what I was trying to do every month. I was trying to have a non-fiction book and a fiction book as well to both help me to read more, but also to kind of back me up in case I don't feel like reading a non-fiction or a fiction. I have two chances to actually meet the challenge. So hopefully that'll help me. I have those two. And then I kind of threw in an extra one that doesn't fit the prompt, but sort of does. I have The Powerful Purpose of Introverts, Why the World Needs You to Be You by Holly Girth. Obviously this doesn't have quiet in the title, but I'm an introvert and I like the quiet. So I figures it kind of goes along with it. We're gonna go with it. The next prompt is February. And for February, the word was love. So a book with love in the title. So I was actually able to find three of them, uh, two nonfiction, one fiction. So I have The Four Loves by C.S. Lewis, uh, Love in a Broken Vessel by Misu Andrews, and then Love Thy Body by Nancy R. Piercy. So for March, I kind of had the hardest time with if a word was, the prompt word was growth. I'm not really into, into plants or anything like that. So I tried to go with a book that had a plant on the cover um, so what I ended up with <laughs> was The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I've been trying to read a lot more classics lately, so maybe this will be my push. And then Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, because there's a tree. That's all I got. April is actually a really interesting prompt, I think. So it was to find a book with your initials in the title. So my initials are M, A, and F, and I really didn't think it would be that hard surprisingly difficult to find a book title with the letter F in it. I had no idea, but it is. Um, and the ones that I did have, most of them I had already read. So I was able to find two, fiction, nonfiction, uh, The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis and Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I've read a lot of good things about this. I tried reading it. I don't know if you can see my bookmark there. I just was very bored, but this will be my incentive. I will give it another shot. May's prompt is both fun and easy, I think, uh, is read a new to you author. I have many of those, many authors that I've never read before on my shelf, but I kind of narrowed it down to three. So I actually have a fiction, two nonfiction. So the first one is The Transformation of Philip Jetton by Georgette Heyer. I've been interested in reading Georgette Heyer for a while now. And then I have a book that I actually got for Christmas, not this past Christmas, but Christmas 2020. Boy, that feels like a lifetime ago. Um, Narnia, Middle Earth, and the Kingdom of God, A History of Fantasy Literature and the Christian Tradition. Uh, this is another one I tried reading a while ago and just kind of couldn't get into it, but hopefully this will be my push. Sorry about the glare, my goodness all that glare. Next one I have is Called to Create a Biblical Invitation to Create, Innovate, and Risk by Jordan Ray. In June we had a fun yet surprisingly difficult prompt which was to find a book that actually had a book on the cover. I was able to find just one. <laughs> on Reading Well, Finding the Good Life Through Great Books by Karen Swallow Pryor. But because I didn't just want to have one book for this month, I'm stretching the definition of the prompt a little bit because I have a book that has book in the title. So we're gonna throw that in. So this is The Book of Romance, What Solomon Says About Love, Sex, and Intimacy by Tommy Nelson. It has the word book, but it's not a book. 
we're gonna go. And then for July, which is my birthday month, we had a prompt that is really calling me out on my bad reading habits, which was to read a book that you've been avoiding but you really want to read. There are so many books I have on these shelves that could fall under that prompt, but I really try to narrow it down to things I really want to read. The first one I have is Wake Up Generation, You Have a Life, How Will You Use It? by Paige O'Marian. I have had this book 10 years. 2022 marks 10 years since this book came out. I was so excited to get it. It has been sitting on my shelf for 10 years. I have moved. It has moved with me for 10 years and I, I have to read it. If I don't read it this year then I have to pass it on to somebody else because Clearly, I'm never gonna get to it. 10 years, way too long. <laughs> book I have is almost as old as that one, as far as sitting on my shelf and not being read. And that is uh, The Making of Middle Earth, A New Look Inside the World of J.R.R. Tolkien by Christopher Snyder. I desperately wanted this book for Christmas in 2013, 2014. Was so excited about it, I found. And it's just sat on the shelf ever since haven't opened it up, haven't tried to read it. It's just been sitting there. <laughs> this is the year we're gonna read this. I love Tolkien. I, I, I would love this book. I do not know why I haven't read it yet. But this year, this is gonna be the year. We're gonna do it. Uh, yeah, and then on a similar vein, because right along the same lines, is The Silmarillion by J.R. Tolkien. I obviously have been wanting to read this for ages um pretty much um and i've started it i've tried listening to it on audio i like it i really do i just need to finish reading the whole darn thing <laughs> so hopefully i get to this one at the very least i will say though i'm gonna be a little bit more gentle on myself in that just as long as i start this one and make a decent effort in it I'll be okay. I don't have to finish it this year, but I just want to make sure that I do start and, you know, get a good ways into it. At least make some progress. So we are on to August. The prompt for August is to find a book with a body part in the title. Um, so I got a kind of an interesting collection. So the first one I have is Calm My Anxious Heart, A Woman's Guide to Finding Contentment by Linda Dillow. Book two that I found is Switch On Your Brain, The Key to Peak Happiness, Thinking, and Health by Dr. Caroline Leaf. And book three is Till We Have Faces, A Myth Retold by C.S. Lewis. So September's prompt is a collection. So I have a couple of things that I think are going to be fun. Um, I don't have a lot of collections because I'm not a big short story person, um, but I do have a few. So the first one is actually Dragon Age to Winter Nights. And I've read about half of the stories in this so far. I think there's about 15 stories. I think I've read seven of them, so almost half. Um, but I really want to try to make sure that I read the rest of them this year. I love the world of Dragon Age. I'm a huge Dragon Age Inquisition fan. You can't see because it's off camera, but I have a whole wall of Dragon Age posters because I'm the obsession is real. Uh, the next one is one I was actually debating about. This is the Collected Stories um, from the Legend of Drizzt series by Ari Talvatore. Uh, the reason I was hesitating with this one is because I've only actually read the first six books in the Legend of Drizzt series, so I know that some of the stories in here take place later on in the series, obviously. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be spoiling anything for myself, if I should wait, if I should just read them now. I'm, I'm undecided, so we'll see when September gets here, how I feel. And then the next one is actually The Complete Fairy Tales by George MacDonald. October's prompt was to find a book with the word secret in it. I'm not a big mystery thriller person. I don't really have anything like that on my shelf. All I had was actually the one that Chantal suggested herself, which was The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And because I couldn't just have one book and because I wanted to expand it a little bit, I have Shadows of Swanford Abbey by Julie Clausen, obviously. It's you're thinking this doesn't have secret in the title. But this is supposed to be like an, literally it's advertised as an Agatha Christie meets Jane Austen type of book. So I know that there are a lot of secrets in this book. And I know that I love Julie Clausen, but I've been having a really hard time getting into this book. I've, I've started it several times and it's just not working. So I really like the idea of putting it later in the year. That way I'm making sure that I am gonna read it but I'm not gonna keep trying to force myself to read it right now. 
because it's just not working. November's challenge was to read a book that makes you feel nostalgic or cozy. Normally, I guess I'd probably try to go for maybe an author that I've already read before or a book in a series that I just haven't read, but I don't really have anything like that on my TBR right now. So instead, I tried to go for books that I have seen the film or TV adaptations and I love. I just haven't read the actual book. So the first one is Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. I love the Peter Pan movie, loved it as a child, watched it all the time. I've just never actually read the book. So hopefully the book will make me feel nostalgic and cozy. I don't know. We're going to give it a try. The next one is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, kind of a similar thing. I love the BBC miniseries uh, with Richard Armitage and Daniel Denby Ash. I love it so much. Have it on DVD. Watch it a lot. So I'm hoping to A, finally read this one because I really want to, um, but also that it'll make me feel nice and cozy. December, the last month of the year. Here we go, guys. So the challenge for December was to read a book that has a mostly white cover. There are actually several books that I could do for this, but I was really trying to narrow it down to things that I wanted to read this year. You know, Just two books. First book is The Lie by Ken Ham. And then the second book is Don't Burn This Book, Thinking for Yourself in an Age of Unreason by Dave Rupert. All right. So those are all the books that I will hopefully be reading this year. And I'm very looking forward to it. And thank you to Chantal for starting this challenge. I'm very excited about it. and very much looking forward to it. Um, please let me know if you've read any of these books, like any of them, um, or if you're participating in the challenge and what books are you using for the prompts. All right. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching.